It's my Nerd World of Star Wars show, and on this week's episode, Daisy Ridley thinks filming her new Ray Star Wars movie will feel very weird. A Star Wars gig that'll pay you $1,000, but you have to meet a very special requirement. And is artificial intelligence Star Wars creation the future of the franchise? As always, the podcast is brought to you by my Embark Science Fiction Space Opera series, available on Amazon.com and MyNerdWorld.net. And there's something relating to that and AI that we'll get into at the end of the show as well. Thank you so much for checking out the episode. Nothing will stand in our way. I find your lack of faith disturbing. I will finish what you started. Who are you? I'm no one. There are stories about what happened. It's true. All of it. The Force. It's calling to you. My nerd road. Just let it in. It is my nerd world, a Star Wars show. I'm your host, John Justice. Welcome to it. I failed to talk about the Bad Batch, and I guess that kind of isn't surprising based off my thoughts of the penultimate Bad Batch episode this past week. As always, if you want to email talkshownerd at gmail.com. So before we dive into the other stories that I have for this relatively short episode uh, this week, the Bad Batch, again... Enjoying the Bad Batch, it's a fun show. I've come to the conclusion, however, that I wish they would have put out all of the episodes all at once. I think that this final season of the Bad Batch could have could have really benefited from being able to see the entire series in its entirety, being able to binge watch it, you know, or at least work through it faster than getting one episode a week. I know they haven't done this in the past, but every single episode I feel as if, oh, or I'm watching the episode and I'm going, is this going to be the end? And then typically it's like, oh, that's the end. Now it makes me want more. A spoiler alert for this week's episode with Omega on Tantus going and seeing the Zillow Beast. That caused quite a bit of excitement for myself, my son Kyle as well. Um, Of course, leading into next week's episode, which I hope is longer than 20 minutes. I'm not complaining that we're getting new Star Wars. I love Star Wars. or I wouldn't be doing this podcast and the show's been a lot of fun. That being said, the episodes just all feel way too short and... It's probably subjective in that way. It's not like the Clone Wars was any different when they were on when they were ongoing. But I just know for this fan, I'm I'm wishing that we would have gotten the entire series all in one shot. Um, I think what they've done with um, series like Visions and Tales of the Jedi, we have Tales of the Empire coming out very soon. There was another teaser that dropped for that this week. That looks like it's going to be. As good, if not better, than Tales of the Jedi, which I quite enjoyed. Huge questions around the Acolyte still. and going to reserve my judgment until I see more footage and essentially until I see the episode. So um, I'm sad the Bad Batch is coming to an end. It's it's a show that I have enjoyed, that I've been enjoying with my family. Uh, This season, unless they really knock it out of the park, I was hoping for a little bit more in terms of midi-chlorians and origins and things of that nature but it doesn't look like it's going to go as deep as I had initially expected based off of those first opening episodes but still been a lot of fun new Star Wars is always fun nonetheless and I'm very much looking forward to next week's episode we are the spark that'll light the fire that'll burn the first order down For a movie that has not even gone into production yet, Daisy Ridley is certainly talking a lot about it, but really not saying a whole lot either. 
Speaking to Total Film in their new issue on coming out, well, it would have been out already. Um, Daisy Ridley said, I honestly have had moments where I'm like, I don't know if I remember what I did as Ray, Ridley, uh, Ridley tells Total Film. It's really strange. I think the whole thing will feel so different anyway with a totally different team. I am very, I'm in a very different place than I was. Now, she's being asked these questions because she's currently out promoting her film, which will be available on Disney+, Plus, A Young Woman and the Sea, which is based off of a true story and looks like it's going to be rather good. It's one of the few things on Disney+, Plus, apart from Star Wars, that I've actually been really kind of anticipating and looking forward to. Daisy Ridley goes on to say, I'm probably going to be one of those adults, and initially I was the youngest person on set, which is a weird feeling. Um, she also opened up about her hopes for working with director Charmaine Obeyed, Obeyed Chinoy in the project. I would also hope that it's a lot of the same crew. Obviously, many people shifted, but many people stayed through all three films. And there was something wonderful and comforting about that. But I don't know. It all remains to be seen. I would hope it feels natural in some way, but also like... I don't know, like it's a new adventure. I'm hoping it's sort of both. Not much is known about the upcoming Star Wars movie, aside from that little pickup with Rey, now Rey Skywalker, 15 years after the rise of Skywalker. The Jedi are in disarray as she tries to bring a new order to the galaxy and rebuild the Jedi. And again, um, Rey's film does not have a release date. Young, uh, The Young Woman in the Sea is released on May 31st. Uh, and there's already trailers available for that. Star Wars, I think, is one of the few franchises, and I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about this. I was just kind of pondering this as I was reading that story that can avoid some of the pitfalls that other franchises have seen when they've had a delay in movies in a series. When you think about Pirates of the Caribbean and... How On Stranger Tides didn't really work as the fourth movie in the film after that initial trilogy. Um, it's okay. Uh, the one that followed after that is the one that I actually... Because I don't think I ever... No, we never purchased On Stranger Tides. But we did... I did purchase uh, Dead Men Tell No Tales. But even when you look at a movie like Ghostbusters Afterlife that came afterwards... And a lot of franchises where... Uh, Toy Story... When the fourth movie came out, um, you know, Star Wars can kind of avoid the pitfalls, pratfalls, the troubles that other franchises do when they release a film after a series where it is something fresh and new and the fans are looking forward to it as opposed to it being judged as kind of a rehash of what came uh, before. I'm still hesitant to believe that our, that uh, that um, Obeyed Shinoi is going to end up ultimately being the director on that movie. Based off of her level of experience, the controversy surrounding her, and what we've seen of Disney and Lucasfilm in the past and switching out directors, and how much is riding on this movie. Uh, we'll, we'll see how this whole thing plays out, but can't put any judgment on it whatsoever. They haven't even started filming yet, and I don't think that the script has been handed in. If it has, it's just been handed in. Any comments that Daisy Ridley is making at this point in time are just a lead up to filming that don't provide any details as to what the film will be about apart from what I described to you. I still fully believe Star Wars belongs on the big screen. I just hope they end up putting out a good piece of content because Disney needs it. Something inside me has always been there. And I was awake. And I need help. Speaking of good content, the operators of the personal fan, uh, finance website Finance Buzz are planning to pay someone $1,000 to watch the nine main Star Wars films this May. There's one catch. You don't have to like or you can't like Star Wars. The gig was announced on Monday is being offered to a single candidate who, for whatever reason, has somehow never seen a single Star Wars film, watched a single Star Wars TV series, or played a Star Wars video game. 
it's probably okay if you once saw a gigantic inflatable Grogu float down 6th Avenue during the Macy's Day Thanksgiving parade. The job description says, Finance Buzz, only once a candidate with fresh Padawan eyes whose opinion and ratings will be used for an upcoming article. Starting in chronological order by release date, you can make your way from... Episode 4, A New Hope, all the way to 9, The Rise of Skywalker. And if you're wondering why they didn't start with Episode 1, you're probably the right person for the job, the description reads. The candidate, uh, the chosen candidate, or Wookie Rookie, come on, as fan, uh, Finance Buzz calls it, uh, this person will be tasked with watching all nine films within a week likely sometime in late May. In return, they will pay them $1,000 plus $100 for any related expenses, such as food, blue milk, which is really tasty, by the way. I got some. If you have the opportunity when you're at the grocery store from Kemp's to buy yourself some blue milk, pick it up. It's definitely worth the cost. Or streaming service fees. The deadline to apply is May the 4th. Applicants must be 18 and live within the U.S., Too knowledgeable about Star Wars lore, not to worry. Finance Buzz has a habit of offering cash in exchange for seemingly passive tasks like watching every Fast and Furious film, listening to 24 hours of breakup songs, or even eating desserts from Trader Joe's. So there you go. I thought this would be tied with the uh, release of all nine films in theaters. It's not happening in every city, but some cities are doing a -a button-um-a-thon and uh, will be showing all nine fi- all, all nine films in sequential order um, on May the 4th, whereas most theaters around the country will be showing just The Phantom Menace, which I am planning on going seeing in the, uh, in the theater. As a matter of fact, I went to go watch The Phantom Menace the other day, and I forgot that it's going to be out on the big screen, to which I pulled my Blu-ray out of its player and put it back into its case to wait to see it again on the big screen with my family. So there you go. I'm not sure you could pay me $1,000 to th- sit through all nine movies. I love all nine movies. Don't misunderstand. There are some that I would absolutely go in the theater and see again. But to actually sit in the theater for nine hours and watch all nine of them for 1000 bucks, I that's a tough one. And I know that sounds weird as a Star Wars fan and I'm doing a podcast, but time is important. And to lose that much time when I can watch those movies at home, I'm not so sure. Does that make me a bad Star Wars fan? I need someone to show me my place in all this. All right, so I have a fun little segment of the podcast deviating from Star Wars a bit that I want to share with you. Before I do, though, let's get to listener feedback this week. Uh, Just one. It's been quiet as of late. Not a lot going on in Star Wars. Why aren't you guys emailing me? Email me. Talkshownerd at gmail.com. N Black writes, I thought Andor was not going to be great on a rewatch, but I gave it a go, and it's even better as a second go-around. It just makes the world of Star Wars feel so real, and the depiction of the Empire is the most effective of all the Star Wars content. The Empire feels scary in Andor instead of that hokey vibe put forth in the original trilogy and in the sequels. Gotta give credit to Gilroy and his writing team. The level of writing on Andor is far superior than anything Star Wars has ever had before or since he should be the guy to helm star wars so no problem with your comments i disagree with that last part because of what you said in there andor feels scary right the empire is scary in andor instead of the hokey vibe put forward in the original trilogy and the sequels but the original trilogy is the original trilogy that's what gave us star wars so for those of us that grew up on star wars that's the core of star wars I think it's cool they made the Empire feel scarier, but I certainly wouldn't want that to be Star Wars moving forward. Because I was raised and Star Wars was great and became popular because of the hokey religions and ancient weapons that were brought about in the original trilogy. Uh, To make it too heady, I think it's fun to watch on occasion. It may be others' vibe like yours more moving forward, but I think the essence of Star Wars still goes back to that original trilogy. And it's why I'll just give a shout-out to it again, why I think that um, um, Ahsoka is one of the best pieces of Star Wars, uh, new Star Wars content, and certainly the best live-action content that they have uh, put out uh, since, uh, you know, that they've put out live-action streaming. 
I know I'm fading a little bit. I'm sorry. I have uh, did my radio show, came home, didn't have a nap, did my Depeche Mode podcast, and now I'm recording this podcast, so I'm about on my last legs. So before I let you go, I want to talk about my science fiction space opera series, as I do at the end of every episode. But to get to that, I want to talk a little bit about AI. And uh, this was a topic in my Depeche Mode podcast because somebody had gone out and created a Depeche Mode song solely with AI, and it's a pretty incredible song. Um, it's definitely AI, but I've listened to it a dozen times now, a dozen times now, because I've really enjoyed it. I've ventured into AI. Uh, I'm not sure how I got there. I don't know if I was reading about something or was looking something up, but I just started doing some research on AI. I've been talking about it on the show. Came across a, a, an AI generation website called Open uh, Open Art AI, and I began messing with it. I've been thinking for a while about changing the covers to my seven book Embark series. I, I paid good money to have those covers created by Tom Edwards. He did a fantastic job. I love those covers. I have two versions of the first cover. The first version was just the core spaceships in the story. Uh, the anniversary freighter, the traverse crafts of my heroes, Taft and Katha, and then the MTCs of the uh, empire of my story called D Corp. Those were on the cover of the, of, the, of the book. I had Tom go and create the characters of the story, Taft, Katha, and their crew, Ven, Jabet, and Ashley, and put them on a cover for uh, a, 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 version, a second version of the cover. Uh, has has more of a of a movie poster style to it, but you know I've had these covers for a while, and I was curious what kind of traction I could get on the books if I chose a different type of cover. Um, and I started going down the road of AI coming across this website, and what AI is able to produce off of a very brief prompt. It's truly incredible. And now I remember why I wanted to bring it up on the <laughs> on the show. There have been videos that have been made because AI can create videos as well. And it's evolving at a rapid rate. It's not there yet where you can actually create an entire show based off of AI. Uh, but eventually it will get there. People have taken Star Wars, they've put it into AI generators, and they've added in certain aesthetics to make it seem like it was produced back during the times of, like, Flash Gordon, which is interesting because George was basing it off that, right? But it has this this retro-futuristic retro futuristic vibe even further back than what George created. And what it's created in these, they're almost like trailers of a potential Star Wars story and what it could be. It's truly incredible. You can see eventually where AI will be able to surpass the hours upon hours of work that a, a, a CGI artist creates uh, in the same way that at the moment it's able to, within a matter of 30 seconds, create a photorealistic version of a simple prompt good enough to where I've put it on the cover of one of my books. I put in a prompt into AI that was as simple as young male starfighter pilot with black hair young female starfighter pilot with blonde hair standing side by side facing the same direction looking intense holding guns with exploding planet in the background now it'll spit out different versions based off that prompt to the point where you have to keep doing it over and over again to get the result that you want to get because it'll keep recreating those images, but what it created was stunning. The first batch of AI art created from that prompt on this website, I've actually am using now for two of my book covers. And I'm going to recreate, I'm going to create book covers for my entire series based solely off of the AI generation from this website along with using the Adobe expanding AI program where you can take a photo, you can choose your size, like I'll choose widescreen. I'll shove a portrait picture that AI created in this other program that has my the image of what I want the cover to look like. 
and then I'll ask the Adobe program to fill in the rest of the picture, and then it gives me a series of options, and it looks incredible. If you want to see an example of this, the first um, change, cover change, is already available online at at, uh, at Amazon.com. So head on over to Amazon.com, look for Embark John J-O-N Justice, and you can see this new cover that I've created. I don't know if this is going to bring about more sales of my books. This is the reason why I'm doing it. I'm trying to see if perhaps a different cover that maybe leans in a little bit more to the age group or the characters of the story, and you'll see what I mean. I'd love to get your thoughts on it, by the way. Um, Head on over to Amazon.com and check it out uh, for yourself. But I will be creating AI covers for all seven of my books, and I'll make them all available, and I'll promote them like I always do, and we'll see if it makes any change. And if it doesn't, it cost me very little <laughs> to go and create these, and I can go and go back to my other covers or perhaps try a different style cover. These are very much photorealistic versions of the characters that I envisioned for my story. I was thinking perhaps down the line I'll create something that's a little bit more simple, maybe a little bit more abstract using symbols and and profiles of spaceships and try something like that. But it makes me wonder how long it'll be until you have fans that go beyond what I mentioned a moment ago of these teasers of a different Star Wars style made with AI to where we'll actually get Star Wars content using the voices and images from the original films created by fans. You will eventually have fan-produced available content generated by AI that will look just like Luke, Han, and Leia, and Chewbacca from the original series. I was watching a video on TikTok last night. It was an interview uh, of Will Smith and uh, Chris Rock. Most people would have no idea it was completely AI generated, unless you told them. As a matter of fact, I started watching it, and at first I thought I was watching a real interview, a sit-down between Will Smith and Chris Rock. And I was like, oh, this is interesting, especially after he slapped him. And then after watching for a while, something seemed off. And sure enough, I went into the comments and somebody said, AI generated that. We're heading into a really interesting time. And the advancements on AI are happening rapidly. Go check out my book cover and see what I mean. It's pretty incredible. I loved this picture. And I spent a good couple hours messing with it, tweaking it, trying to get different versions of it until I landed on this one. I'd be really interested uh, to hear what your thoughts are with regard to that. And, of course, um, I hope to just ultimately buy the books. That's the whole point of it, right? <laughs> Head on over to uh, Amazon.com. Search for Embark, John, J-O-N, Justice. Uh, you can go to MyNerdWorld.net, and you can click on it uh, there as well. But just go on, go on over to Amazon. You can uh, pick up uh, all seven books in the series, available in uh, ebook, Kindle Unlimited, Hardcover, paperback, and audiobook as well. Follow the adventures as Earth faces its end of pilots Taft, Katha, and their crew on a journey of survival across the galaxy as they fight for humanity's future among the stars. If you like to read science fiction and you like really cool tech, technology, romance, and a ton of action, Embark is perfect for you. It is written for adults, but it's great for ages 11 plus. It leans a little bit into the young adult, teen young adult, but no different than the original Star Wars movies did either. Pick up uh, Embark Book One uh, today. And thank you so much for checking out this week's episode. I hope you'll be back again next week. And wherever you are, you are happy, you are healthy, and you are safe. We'll talk to you then. Bye. The Force will be with you always. My Nerd Road. <laughs>